morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Francis Church on this third Sunday of Easter when we remember with gratitude our Lord's promise that he is the Good Shepherd. We welcome you to our service of choral morning prayer, which you can follow in your bulletin. Thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen.
first lesson is a reading from Baruch. Take courage, my children, cry to God, and he will deliver you from the power and hand of the enemy. For I have put my hope in the everlasting to save you, and joy has come to me from the Holy One, because of the mercy which soon will come to you from your everlasting Savior. For I sent you out with sorrow and weeping, but God will give you back to me with joy and gladness forever. For as the neighbors of Zion have now seen your capture, so they soon will see your salvation by God, which will come to you with great glory and with the splendor of the everlasting. My children, endure with patience the wrath that has come upon you from God. Your enemy has overtaken you, but you soon will see their destruction and will tread upon their necks. My tender sons have traveled rough roads. They were taken away like a flock, carried off by the enemy. Take courage, my children, and cry to God, for you will be remembered by him who brought this upon you. For just as you propose to go astray from God, return with tenfold zeal to seek him. For he who brought these calamities upon you will bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Take courage, O Jerusalem, for he who named you will comfort you. Here endeth the lesson. As a reminder, the Tadeum Laudamus is S206. Ladies will sing verse 2. Men will sing verse 3. Everybody will sing everything else.
the second lesson from John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hireling and not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hireling and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. As the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also and they will heed my voice. So there shall be one flock, one shepherd. Here endeth the second lesson.
God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Let us pray. as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever Show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And you ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only thou, O God. O God, may clean our hearts within us. God, whose Son Jesus is the Good Shepherd of thy people, grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls us each by name, and follow where he doth lead, 
who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, Defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning and welcome to St. Francis. We have a few announcements in your bulletin. Um, after this service, there will be immediately afterwards in the chapel, there will be a brief service for the administration of Holy Communion from the reserved sacrament. So if you would like to make a communion this morning, you should go to the chapel. And um, I, just a reminder to those of you who won't be attending that service to please leave quietly after the uh, postlude is finished so that you won't be interrupting those who are uh, receiving Holy Communion. Also, uh, after the service today, uh, there will be a brief meeting in the library for those who are going on the women's retreat, which will be two weekends from this weekend down at the beach. And if you have not yet uh, turned in a photograph or had your photo taken for the photo directory, uh, please go to the columbarium immediately after the service and someone will take your photo. This is your very last opportunity to be included in the directory. Also details uh, in the bulletin about this week's Talk of the Town presentation on Wednesday night, uh, featuring the story of the Scotland community with uh, dinner at 5.30, followed by a presentation at 6.30, and next Sunday, an organ recital here in the church at four o'clock, uh, presented by the Potomac chapter of the American Guild of Organists. Ascribe unto the Lord the honor due his name, bring presents and come into his courts.
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Psalm 23, verse 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The old man said that he wanted to see me, to talk about his faith. We sat down in his well-appointed living room amid the family pictures in their silver frames, and it all came tumbling out quickly. He was dying, not today or next week, but soon enough. He'd seen the best doctors, had his share of experimental treatments, but there was no cure for his diagnosis. He thought about his death every day now, a reality that he probably hadn't considered for years at a time when he was in his prime. He'd been too busy living then, a successful businessman, a quick wit that made him the life of any gathering, golf, sailing, grandchildren, world travel. He'd done all that, and then some. But that was as far behind him as the immunotherapy at this point. His full and wide-ranging life had narrowed, mostly to this one room and his sons, the occasional friend who didn't get bothered when the old man couldn't find the word he meant or forgot he'd told that story once before. For the first time in his life, he felt truly alone. Even those who loved him best could not put themselves where he was anymore. They still had their spouses, the strength of their legs, clarity of mind. And the reality staring him in the face was one that no one he knew had been through. We can describe what death is like biologically. It's been depicted in thousands of films, paintings, and works of literature. But none of us really knows what the experience of death is like. No one could answer the questions that most troubled him. It wasn't the pain of it that bothered him, and he didn't have major regrets. He'd had a good run of things and could see that it was his time. During our second talk, I found he was curious about what lay behind death, but he didn't start with the metaphysics. It was a dread of being alone, of needing to chart his way across an unknown territory without a map, wandering lost in the darkness. That's what left him shuddering when he lay in bed at night. There's a vivid description of that feeling in some verses by Edward Thomas, one of Britain's war poets, who saw a great deal of death before his own life came to an end in Flanders fields. To go into the unknown, I must enter and leave alone. I know not how. The tall forest towers, its cloudy foliage lowers, a head shelf above shelf, it's silence I hear and obey, that I may lose my way and myself. The old man, I think, feared that death would be like that. And if that's what it's like, who wouldn't? He sensed, I think, that a minister might have other opinions on the subject and somewhat awkwardly asked me for my views. He hadn't been to church in half a century and wasn't really sure if we taught the same things we did back then anyway, but he had some notion that there must be more to it than fumbling alone through the darkness until all is lost. First, I shared with him the 23rd Psalm, sung a few minutes ago by the choir to that stirring tune by Gary Davison. This text he knew, though he hadn't seen its relevance to his situation before. I told him that he had to think of himself as a sheep for the metaphor to make sense. A few decades earlier, he might have been insulted, but he now knew that that was about the measure of things for him. He was a sheep who belonged to a shepherd, one who had claimed him in holy baptism many decades earlier, one who knew him by name, and loved him deeply, though he had long ignored that love. That shepherd was ready to feed him, to protect him from his enemies, to bring him home where all would be safe. The shepherd knew he was lost and lonely, far away from the flock. And I was here on behalf of the shepherd to help lead him down a good path. The metaphor of God as the shepherd of his people 
recurs all through the Bible. It rests in an acknowledgement that God's knowledge and power are much greater than ours, and he aims to use them for our good. After a series of invasions and deportations left the Israelites scattered across the Mediterranean world, the metaphor took on a special poignancy. The pain of that scattering is expressed powerfully in our Old Testament lesson from Baruch, where Jerusalem speaks of her lost children. My tender sons have traveled rough roads. They were taken away like a flock carried off by the enemy. And yet she is confident in the shepherd's ultimate plan. God will give you back to me with joy and gladness forever. When Jesus assured his followers, I am the good shepherd, and I lay down my life for the sheep, he was pointing to another deeper level of fulfillment in this ancient metaphor. God would indeed gather his people together. He would reconcile them to himself, forgiving their sins. But in the one who laid down his life, he would also defeat the final enemy, the snarling wolf of death. Jesus explicitly ties his ministry as the Good Shepherd to his death and resurrection. God, our Easter blessing, reminds us, is he who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. Jesus enters the valley of the shadow of death for us all, and he alone comes back to tell the tale. When the old man asked what death was like, I could not speak from my own experience, but I could tell him what the only reliable witness had to say on the matter. I assured him that when his time came to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus would be with him. He would not be alone or lost. There would be no darkness there for him, but the presence of Jesus would quiet his fears and fill him with peace. We pass with Jesus as one of our Easter prayers says, through the grave and gate of death. Our bodies rest in the grave until the day when he raises them anew. But death is also a gate, and once opened and passed through, our shepherd leads us on to the Father's house, where we will dwell with him forever. The old man called me back numerous times, and each time he would talk of his fears, and I would remind him about the shepherd, and he would be at peace again. Father Mac used to see him as well. He told me, I love visiting him. I sit down and he asks me, tell me again, what is the gospel? Over a year or so of visits, he confessed his sin and made a firm commitment to Jesus. He received the Holy Sacrament with reverence and great gratitude. Would that each of us could be so ready for our deaths. He walked through the valley of the shadow in one of the loneliest times that many of us have known, in the third or fourth week of the COVID lockdown in late March of 2020. His was the only funeral I have ever conducted solely by Zoom. In one sense, it was the death that he feared most. His children who loved him could not stand by his bed. Masks and screens sealed him off from meaningful human contact of any kind. No one thought to call me for the last rites. But Jesus was with him. The Good Shepherd took him in his arms and carried him through that valley. He confidently pushed wide the gate and brought him to the Father's house to dwell in peace forever. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen. amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, thou good shepherd of the sheep, who camest to seek the lost 
and to gather them into thy fold. Have compassion on those who have wandered from thee. Feed those who hunger. Cause the weary to lie down in thy pastures. Bind up those who are broken in heart and strengthen those who are weak. And lead us all in the paths of righteousness for thy name's sake. Amen. We pray for those who are near death, the prayer of Elizabeth Googe. O Savior of the world, lifted upon the cross, that all men might be drawn to thy love, dying for the salvation of us all. We beseech thee to make that love and that salvation a growing reality of glory to those who face their death. Grant to them, O Lord, thy gift of a perfect repentance, and then may the heaven of thy forgiveness banish all fear from them forever. Amen. An Easter prayer of the Mozarabic Sacramentary. We give thee thanks, O Heavenly Father, who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of thy Son. Grant, we pray thee, that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his presence abiding in us he may raise us to joys eternal. Through the same, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us give thanks to God for his many blessings to us, praying together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.